In this video, I'm going to look at Minecraft data packs. What are they? How do they compare to mods? What can they do and what can't they do? As part of this video, we'll make a simple data pack. So if you're interested in that sort of thing, then this will help you get started. Data packs in Minecraft go hand in hand with resource packs. While resource packs alter the appearance of the game, data packs can alter its behavior. Data packs are similar to mods, but they only use features of vanilla Minecraft, so they don't require anything else to be installed. Instead of changing the game's code, they add new functionality through standard Minecraft commands, just like command blocks. While a mod is active, all worlds are affected, but data packs are world specific, so you don't need to restart the game to switch between them. You can even reload a data pack without leaving the world, which is super useful for developers. Data packs represent a move by Mojang towards a more customizable game experience without the need for mods. Features that were once hard coded, such as structures, are slowly finding their way into data packs. In a way, Minecraft is becoming more and more like a game engine, with the game specific logic gradually shifting from code to data. Data packs are limited by the set of available commands, but this is constantly expanding, and players have found incredibly clever ways to use what's available to perform surprisingly complex tasks, such as ray casting and pathfinding. The mini games offered by Minecraft Realms often use data packs to create entirely new games within Minecraft. For example, Yegg's Tower Defense allows the player to construct and upgrade towers to defend against waves of incoming minecarts. More specifically, data packs can be used to add everything shown here. They can also override these aspects of vanilla Minecraft. If you want zombies to drop elytra, data packs can do that for you. We'll cover some of these categories in more detail later. Data packs can't change anything outside of a Minecraft world such as menu screens. They can't add new blocks, items or mobs, although this can be mimicked to some degree by retexturing existing ones. They can't capture arbitrary inputs such as keystrokes, although clever mechanisms have been devised to detect mouse clicks. For some, these limitations represent a challenge rather than a restriction. Let's take a look at making our own data pack. Go ahead and create a Minecraft world, then open the world folder and you should see a subfolder called data packs. Any data packs that we put here will be loaded by the world automatically. To create a data pack, make a new folder and give it a name. From here on out, I'm gonna be using VS Code. I've got it set up with a custom extension so it gives us some nice syntax highlighting when it comes to writing our own functions but you can just as easily use Notepad or any other text editor. Within your data pack folder, create a file called pack.mcmeta. This is how Minecraft recognizes a data pack and its contents are fairly standard. I'll put all the information you need in the description. If we then go back into the game and type slash reload, the game should load our data pack automatically. Of course, right now it doesn't do anything, but if we type slash data pack list, we can at least see that it's loaded. Before we can create any other files, we need to define our namespace. A namespace is literally just a folder that's going to contain our data, and this helps to prevent conflicts between data packs. For example, if two data packs both add a function called superjump, that's okay, because they each exist in their own namespace. For the purposes of this video, I'll call my namespace QB. One thing I actually missed when I was recording these clips of VS Code is that the namespace needs to go inside another folder called data. So if your data pack doesn't seem to be working, it might just be that you have the wrong folder structure, so do double check. And again, I'll put everything you need in the description. Let's move on to functions. A function is just like a series of chained command blocks. We can call functions directly from the game 
and later on we'll see how we can have the game call a function automatically. Functions belong in a folder called functions. Within this folder, let's create a simple function called give me diamonds.mc function. And within this file, we just need a single line give at s diamond 64. The at s part is called a target selector. There are lots of different target selectors available, but this one just means whoever called this function. The rest of the command is pretty straightforward. Any lines that start with a hash sign are treated as comments and will be ignored by the game. This is really useful when writing longer functions since they can get quite complicated. To call our function in Minecraft, we just have to reload the data pack and run slash function qb colon give me diamonds. If everything went well, you should now have a bunch of diamonds. Next, let's look at tags. Tags are essentially just a way of grouping related things together. For example, the climbable tag contains a list of blocks that the game should consider climbable, such as vines, ladders, and scaffolding. There are two tags that Minecraft provides which are especially important, load and tick. Load is a group of functions that Minecraft will call whenever the server is reloaded and tick is similar but contains functions that Minecraft will call every tick, which is normally 20 times a second. This is really useful for implementing custom game logic because we don't want the player to have to call our functions manually every time we want something to happen. Let's add our give me diamonds function to the load tag so that it gets called whenever the data pack loads. Since the load tag is a standard tag, it lives in the Minecraft namespace in a folder called tags and a subfolder called functions, since this is a tag that contains a group of functions. Tags, like many other data files, use the JSON format. This stands for JavaScript Object Notation and is a standard means of representing complex data as text. The load tag should look something like this. Crucially, the replace property needs to be false since we want our data pack to add to this tag, not overwrite it entirely. If we set replace to true, then we would risk our data pack breaking other data packs that also rely on this tag. One more thing, we need to change our target selector. Remember that at s means whoever called this function? Well, since the function is no longer being called by a player, it doesn't make sense to use this anymore. Let's change it to at a, which means all players. Now when we reload our data pack, we should find that our function is called automatically, and we get a bunch more diamonds without having to do anything. This is the basic principle behind anything you could implement in a data pack. The Minecraft command language is vast, so I can't cover it in lots of detail right here. If you want to learn more, there's loads of information on the Minecraft wiki. My advice would be start with something simple and build up gradually. The other features such as advancements and loot tables work in exactly the same way as tags, just using custom JSON files to add or override features. Let me know if you want to know more about a specific feature and I can always make another tutorial in the future.